Hello friends, today we will be discussing about the different types of hypertension. In order to understand the basic etiology behind the hypertension, we need to understand the different types of hypertension, which is basically based on the cause, which we say in terms of pharmacotherapeutic language, etiology or a risk factor. So I have categorized different eight types of hypertension. Basically, there are two types only in hypertension and that is primary and secondary hypertension. But when we go into detail about the different types, there are several types which is based on the several etiology. So I have narrated all the possible types of hypertension to understand when the clinician diagnoses the hypertension, what is the basic concept or what is the basic etiology behind that hypertension and how this hypertension is treated. So we start with the first type that is essential or primary hypertension. Now this essential or primary hypertension is comprised of more than 90% of the all hypertension diagnosed. So amongst the patient who diagnose with the hypertension, more than 90% of the patient will have primary or essential hypertension. This hypertension doesn't have any identifiable cause. The cause of the essential hypertension is yet to be found. It is unknown and that is why it is known as a primary hypertension where the primary reason behind the rise in blood pressure is still unknown. Now you must be wondering that why it is called essential hypertension. So the word, the term essential came from the misbelief that certain elevation in blood pressure is required to perfuse the vital organ. Whereas if we increase, if we keep on increasing blood pressure to perfuse the vital organ, it will ultimately harm those vital organs compared to the benefit of that perfusion that vital organs are getting. So essential is the word term came from the misbelief that certain high blood pressure is essential to perfuse the vital organ. It is not necessary 120 by 80 the earlier JNC 7 guideline 120 by 80 mmHg blood pressure is required to perfuse all the vital organ and latest guideline as per JNC 8 140 by 90 blood pressure if maintained in the blood vessel it is sufficient to perfuse the vital organ. Coming to the secondary hypertension the second type of hypertension that is secondary hypertension here the word itself indicates that the hypertension is secondary to a primary cause. So primary cause of rise in blood pressure may be different. So this is why it is known as secondary hypertension. This secondary hypertension is basically divided into two different types. First is remediable hypertension and second is drug induced secondary hypertension. Now we discuss about first remediable hypertension. This condition is rise because of any abnormal condition arise from the renal system from the adrenal system or some physiological or anatomical abnormality like coarctation of aorta. So when I talk about renal abnormality, if a person is suffering from renovascular disease, the renal system uh, is compromised and due to compromised in the renal function, there will be certain rise in the blood pressure. Second is adrenal system, disease like pheochromocytoma, which is a, which is a tumor of adrenal gland. That is responsible for elevation in blood pressure by secreting more amount of epinephrine and norepinephrine. And the third one is coarctation of aorta, where the anatomically aorta of a person having a coarctation of aorta is very narrow. So when the left ventricle contracts, there will be uh, blood coming from the ventricle and because of the narrowing of aorta, the pressure in the aortic system will be higher. So this is why it is induced because of some other physiological condition there will be rise in blood pressure and that is why it is known as remedial blood pressure, remedial secondary hypertension. Next is drug induced hypertension where when patient is taking certain kind of medication, the, the mechanism of those drugs are such that it will lead to rise in blood pressure. I'll give you the example non steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. These drugs are responsible for vasoconstriction and thus it is leading to rise in blood pressure. So if a person is taking non steroidal anti-inflammatory drug for more than 6 to 10 months, patient might have uh, seen rise in blood pressure. 
Second is oral contraceptive pills. In female, those who are taking oral contraceptive pills for longer period of time, they have uh, shown rise in blood pressure in the later age. Next is cyclosporine and tacrolimus like drug, which is immunosuppression drug. They are also causing venoconstriction. Venoconstriction lead to increase in uh, venous return. Increase in venous return leads to increase in preload. Increase in preload leads to increase in stroke volume. Increase in stroke volume leads to increase in cardiac output and increase in cardiac output leads to increasing systolic blood pressure. And because of the venoconstriction, there will be increase in afterload and thus it is increasing diastolic blood pressure. We have uh, shown how blood pressure and these parameters are affected in the earlier video. You can check that video if you have if you want to understand it better that how blood pressure is affected by the preload and afterload. Next is uh, recombinant uh, human erythropoietin which is given in those patients who are suffering from chronic anemia. It is given and this drug is having a high tendency to rise the blood pressure. So those who are taking uh, recombinant human erythropoietin product they have to monitor the blood pressure because it leads to rise in blood pressure. Corticosteroid use of corticosteroid for longer duration of time also leads to rise in blood pressure. Now this all drugs which is causing a rise in blood pressure when it stops when we stop taking this drug there will be normalization of blood pressure and that is it that is why it is known as secondary hypertension where if you remove the cause of elevation in blood pressure there will be normalization of blood pressure and we can skip taking antihypertensive drug if the blood pressure is not fluctuating. So this is about secondary hypertension. Coming to the next six type of hypertension, it is very essential for us to understand this type of hypertensions because this hypertension are very much uh, misdiagnosed with respect to primary and secondary hypertension. So coming to the most important type that is pseudo hypertension. Now this pseudo hypertension is diagnosed mainly in elder patient. So after 60 or 65 years of age, patient uh, blood vessel becomes stiff because of calcification in the normal blood vessel. Let me show you how it occurs. So if this is a blood vessel, there will be calcification in the walls of this blood vessel. Because of calcification in the wall of blood vessel, there will be stiffness in the blood vessel. Due to stiffness, when we measure the blood pressure using sphygmomanometer and when the cuff of blood pressure measuring device applies the pressure on the blood vessel, due to the stiffness, the high pressure is required to occlude the artery. In normal patient, we require a normal pressure to occlude the artery and when we release the pressure, there will be uh, non-occlusion of the artery and we can hurt the sound using stethoscope and we measure the blood pressure. But those patients whose blood vessel is stiff, we require more pressure in order to occlude the artery. And that is why the value which we record in terms of by using spigmo, normal sphygmomanometer, it will become higher. It is not a true value of blood pressure because of this calcification, because of the stiffness of blood vessel, there will be false rise in blood pressure when we measure the blood pressure using sphygmomanometer and that is why to understand and to diagnose the pseudo hypertension we need to use Osler's manual instrument to measure the blood pressure where the palpability of the blood vessel is uh, checked using this instrument in order to diagnose the patient with hypertension whether a patient has truly elevation in blood pressure or the elevation in blood pressure is mainly because of stiffness of the blood vessel and that is why more pressure is required to occlude the artery. So that is pseudo hypertension. Next is white coat hypertension. Now white coat hypertension the word itself indicates that when a person see a clinician majorly when a person visit a clinician office and when a person see a doctor person blood pressure will rise. The same person when go back to home the blood pressure becomes normal. So this is Condition induced blood pressure. This is a fear of clinician or a fear of a hospital setup and because of that setup patient blood pressure is elevating and thus in order to eliminate whether a person is having a uh, white coat hypertension or normal hypertension 24 hour ambulatory blood pressure monitoring is required where the blood pressure of a patient is monitored in the person's house 24 hour 
with a periodical interval and then we can uh, actually diagnose whether a person is having actual hypertension or it is conditioned or set up induced hypertension that is white coat hypertension. The next type is isolated systolic hypertension. So isolated systolic hypertension is basically seen in the elder patient where only there will be seen rise in systolic blood pressure and there will be no rise in diastolic blood pressure. Ideally, when we have understand the concept of blood pressure, we have seen in our previous video that if there will be rise in systolic blood pressure, there will be some certain rise in the diastolic blood pressure as well. But in isolated systolic hypertension, which is basically seen in the patient who are elder and it is a female oriented condition where only rise in systolic blood pressure is seen compared to the diastolic blood pressure. Let's say example, a systolic blood pressure is 160 or 170 mmHg, whereas diastolic blood pressure will be 80 or 84 mmHg. So there is no rise in diastolic blood pressure, but there is a sudden rise in the systolic blood pressure. This is mainly due to loss of elasticity of the blood vessel. Due to age, there will be loss of elasticity and specifically in female due to certain physiology and hormonal changes, there will be loss of elasticity of blood vessel and due to the loss of elasticity of blood vessel, there will be compromise in contractility and due to that reason, there is a certain rise in systolic blood pressure and there is no rise in diastolic blood pressure. That is that condition, that hypertension is known as isolated systolic hypertension. Next is malignant hypertension. Now this malignant hypertension is sudden rise in blood pressure which is very abnormal. In order to explain this, I can explain that if the diastolic blood pressure is seen more than 130 mmHg, generally after 110 or 120 mmHg diastolic blood pressure, it is a condition called hypertensive emergency or hypertensive urgency, combinedly known as hypertensive crisis. But if the diastolic blood pressure is more than 130 mmHg, suddenly with from the baseline 90 or 100 mmHg, it is known as malignant hypertension where the immediate intervention is required. Otherwise, it leads to very severe cerebral or cardiovascular complication. This condition, this malignant condition again is mainly seen in young adult African American patient and the female when they are pregnant, during pregnancy, if they have a toxemic condition, they have a toxemia during pregnancy, those female can suffer from malignant hypertension in the future. So that is uh, malignant hypertension. Next is resistant hypertension. Now resistant hypertension is basically those type of hypertension where the first line and second line therapy of antihypertensive is not working. So when person develop resistance again, first and second line antihypertensive therapy, it is known as resistant hypertension. Let's say if I give enalapril to a person suffering from hypertension, person will not respond. So I'll add hydrochlorothiazide or beta blocker along with the AC inhibitor. Still, after taking two drug, uh, two antihypertensive drug, patient is not responding to the blood pressure. That kind of blood pressure is known as resistant hypertension. Again, this resistant hypertension is mainly seen in those patients who are suffering from hypertension with some comorbid condition where that comorbid condition is contributing to elevation in the blood pressure. And we are only treating the blood pressure from the basic fundamentals of hypertension pathophysiology. And we don't treat those comorbid condition or we don't focus on those comorbid condition. And that is why person blood pressure level is not going down. Apart from that, if the epidemiological data we look at, it is seen in the older patient, obese patient, female, and again in African American patient resistant hypertension is more commonly seen and the last type and most important type is gestational hypertension now gestational hypertension the word itself means that it is a pregnancy induced hypertension i explain that pregnancy is divided into three trimester first trimester no one will suffer from any abnormal condition when it comes to blood pressure or blood sugar but in the second trimester or at the end of second trimester after 20 weeks of pregnancy person's blood pressure or sugar start elevating so if a person's blood pressure after 20 weeks of pregnancy start elevating without any uh, protein secretion in the urine or any kind of edema, it is known as gestational hypertension, which need to be treated. Otherwise, because of elevation in blood pressure, fetus will be deprived of blood supply. And if fetus is deprived of blood supply, the only source of nutrition and oxygen is blood supply. If it is less, the fetal growth will be retarded. And that is why gestational hypertension is 
very important to treat. Second condition, if the gestational hypertension is not treated, it will convert into a condition called preeclampsia. This preeclampsia is nothing but very similar to gestational hypertension where the blood pressure is increasing along with the proteinuria. Urine will have protein that is very abnormal condition. Proteinuria and edema. If the blood pressure is high after 20 weeks of pregnancy with the presence of proteinuria and the presence of edema, swelling in the lower limbs, it is known as preeclampsia. And this condition can lead to premature birth of a baby. So if a person is suffering from gestational hypertension, it is very essential to treat the hypertension using those antihypertensive drugs which are safe in pregnancy. So this is all about different types of hypertension.